What's this? Too spooky paranormal tape with girl IDK watch it. Sounds like a sounds like a grand idea. Whoops. I'd come to this project with many of the same assumptions that you have concerning the Jersey Devil murders and the guilt of Jim Seward. His characterization as a troubled young man responsible for a spree of horrific ritualistic homicides in the Pine Barrens. The question in my mind was why? Why would a man commit such crimes? After reviewing hours of archived footage generated by Stephen Avcast and Locus Wheeler, the hosts of Factor Fiction, I've been forced to change my perspective. The question now for me is what? What really happened that night? There are films that come first of their kind. Then there are films that are revolutionary, not just for the way they were shot and filmed, but for how they were shown. But what if they were both? The last broadcast is a 1998 independent horror film directed, written, produced, and starring Stefano Velos and Lance Wheeler. In the late 1990s, horror films were becoming stale and repetitive, such as the subgenre slasher flicks becoming just monotonous. That's why self-aware parodies like Scary Movie and Scream started to come out. Oh, just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. In 1999, The Blair Witch Project came out, and it was pretty fucking cool. But it wasn't the first movie to do the found footage documentary horror film. Even though The Blair Witch is a horror classic, contrary to popular belief, it was not the first one. The movie I'm reviewing today, the last broadcast, is what I believe to be the very first of this subgenre. This film is also the first to use consumer level products and equipment to make a feature length film. This movie has only a budget of $900 and the revenue is $4 million, making it one of the best budget to film revenue in film history. This film was also broadcasted to a theater by satellite. This movie has three revolutionary things going for it. But why isn't it popular today? So let's like watch the movie and find out why this shit's not popular and why it didn't win an Oscar for a uh, best Braveheart movie. <laughs> the film opens up with a documentary filmmaker explaining the factor fiction murders and Jim Seward's guilt and his reasons for making this documentary. This filmmaker's name is David Lay and his super creepy monotone voice adds to the atmosphere of the film that is prominent throughout. Steven's idea was to do a first ever live broadcast of fact or fiction. It would be broadcast simultaneously to cable television and the internet. The promotions began immediately, and with ratings dropping at an ever increasing speed, the concept was implemented immediately. I mean, this movie is really, really creepy, not in like the traditional sense of there's something lurking, it's just this ominous, atmosphere and tone throughout the entire film, which I'll get to later. Steven Avcast and Locus Wheeler are the hosts of a local television program called Factor Fiction that focuses on unsolved mysteries in the paranormal. Oh yeah, Steven Avcast and Locus Wheeler are their, it's just a play on the name. They're the, their real names are Stevana Velos and Lance Wheeler. Wow, that's really crazy! <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're here at the Butt Barrens, where we're gonna find the Jersey Faggot. Uh, alright, uh, look, it's... Oh, if you look off into the distance, there he is. Oh, that's spooky. 
Oh, so, so spooky. So spooky. Oh, hey, thanks for watching this horrible video that I'll probably never put a second part out to. But here's my other videos. Part two's coming soon. Thanks for watching, I guess. This is the end slate. What do you expect me to say? Also, this video is really boring. Why are you watching still? How did you even make it this far? I'm gay.